You want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You can't handle the truth! Well, we're giving you the Michigan Sports Truth, the show that detects, exposes, and reveals actual and hidden facts, truth, research, and statistics about all the Detroit and Michigan sports teams that the mainstream media doesn't want you to know, whether fans like it or not. No junk, no entertainment, no homerism, no coddling, no pop culture, no opinions, no shilling, and no fluff. Head over to our website at michigansportstruth.weebly.com, follow us on Twitter at Michigan underscore truth, and like our our Facebook page, The Michigan Sports Truth. Also listen to us on Spreaker, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts via iTunes. The Michigan Sports Truth podcast does not represent or defame any of the teams it covers. It only detects, exposes, and reveals honest, actual, and hidden truth, facts, and statistics about them. And welcome to episode, uh, and welcome to the post game edition for Tuesday, June nineteenth, two thousand eighteen. I'm Taylor Phillips. Follow me personally at DT Two Phillips. Also, uh, we are here on Spreaker, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts via iTunes. I am with Louis Tenor, our national sports reporter. So, well. Uh, Let's get down to it. That one is long gone. The Tigers get embarrassed by the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, the worst team in the National League. 9-5 to five at the Great American Ballpark. Man. That's something I did not expect. Matt Boyd giving up a grand slam to Joey Votto. In the first three innings. And Boyd finishes with five earned, finishes in four innings pitch, giving up five earned runs on six hits, walking three and striking out five. The bullpen gives up four. Warwick Sopold and Drew Verhagen, who uh, got hit in the face with a line drive, took X is going to take X rays. Uh, I'm not sure. what his results are. Tigers score five runs in the ninth inning. Yeah, they, they're trying to bring that rally goose to, with them on the road, but that sure failed. The Tigers were down 9 nothing after eight innings of play. Uh, Verhagen was bleeding at bleeding in the face. There's still no result on his x-rays yet, but uh, we'll, we'll get a result anyway, but a loss is still a loss. If fans thought the Tigers were going to come all the way back with nine, at least nine runs in the ninth inning, well, God, I, I, they, they would only, they say that because they only hope they do, which is not reality. Them, them bunch of lame ducks. Tigers now 36, second plate. 36 and 38th, second place in the American League Comedy Central. Four games back at the Cleveland Indians, who won tonight, 39 and 33. Ten, game, ten and a half games back of the wild card spots, three spots back. They were one spot back after Sunday. Again, you gave up nine runs to the worst team in the to the worst team in the National League on the road. Could the same thing happen tomorrow afternoon with Michael Fulmer on the mound? Who takes on Ty- Tyler Molly? Molly, who is five and six, three ninety six ERA, one thirty seven WHIP. Former three three and five, four thirteen ERA, one twenty six WHIP. We'll have to find out. First pitch is twelve thirty five tomorrow. Other news: uh, Nick Castellanos 
is now in the mix in the Amer in the All Star Game MLB All Star Game voting ballot. Are you out of your mind? The national media and Major League Baseball is ranking them, ranking Castellanos eleventh among outfielders in Major League Baseball, which I don't understand. Which is which is which seems crazy to me. It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. And Castellanos' defensive war is still getting a ratio of negative one point four. His his total war is is positive one point two, but his defensive war is negative one point four. Victor Martinez and Jacoby Jones are also being blended in. Victor Martinez Where the hell can I find him? Uh, Victor Martinez. There we go. Uh, Victor Martinez's total war is negative 0.7. His offensive war, negative 0.8, negative 0.8, and defensive war, negative 0.5. That tells the story for you. Jacoby Jones, his offensive war is, zero, is negative 0 0.3, and, but his defensive war is positive 0 0.9. As a player in Major League Baseball, you have to be better in both both offensive and defensive war to earn your spot in the All-Star game. Otherwise, you would be only hoping for good luck, which is probably not going to do you any good, or much, if any. So... And, and even if any of those those three players were, it wouldn't matter because it's just an all star game anyway. And besides, those three players aren't just are not valuable enough to, to lead the Tigers to power the Tigers into a playoff push. Water will hit its level soon enough. I've said that many times. If anybody wants to argue, they can they can only they can only sound like an idiot. So there you go. Also Touchdown Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions were involved in trade talks about New England Patriots running back Rob Gronkowski. Oh, man. The Patriots were shopping Gronkowski. That was a that was according to an article somewhere. From the score.com. There we go. 16 people reaching on, on the Michigan Sports Truth Facebook page. Gronkowski trade talks included Lions, Texans, and at least two others. This one from Eston McLaren. Rob Gronkowski attended the Patriots mandatory minicamp earlier this month and seemingly brought an end to an offseason filled with rumors of retirement or possible trade. The MMQB's Albert Breer appeared on Monday's edition of the Herd of the Herd with Colin Coward and addressed just how far those rumored trade talks may have gone. Breer said, "I don't quote. I don't think they were shopping Gronk to the entire league, but there were some teams they trust that I know they talked to. The Lions, the Detroit Lions, the Tennessee Titans, the Houston Texans." And, that's, and the San Francisco 49ers. 
you can make the you you guys can make the connections there unquote the connections including include Lions general manager Bob Quinn and head coach Matt Patricia who previously who both previously worked for the Patriots new Titan new Titans head coach Mike Verabel is a former Patriots linebacker Texans head coach Bill O'Brien was a is a former Patriots offensive coordinator and 49ers quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo was acquired from New England during last season. He was a he was previously a backup quarterback behind Tom Brady, the former the former Michigan Wolverine. The Patriots had grown weary of Gronkowski's level of commitment to the team, according to Breer. But a sit down conversation with head coach Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick apparently resolved any potential apparently resolved any potential issues. The two side skipping along here to, to the last paragraph. The the two sides have reportedly been working on a new contract that could see Gronkowski the Patriots and Gronkowski to see that can see Gronkowski receive, receive a raise from his current contract that's set to pay him up to $9 million in 2018 and up to $10 million in 2019, according to Spot Track. And that was an article below that related a report Gronkowski extension likely but not imminent. So. There's a 50, 50, there's about a 50-50 chance he may stay a Patriot or go to one of those four teams, the Lions, the Texans, the Titans, or the 49ers. So we're going to keep our eyes on that. Also, like I promised on, on our Facebook page, the Michigan Sports Truth, the Lions have re revamped their run game meantime, but they still have pass rushing questions, according to ESPN's Michael Rothstein, and how they fared is too soon to tell, he writes. The move that Michael Rothstein liked was the hiring of Patricia. The move I didn't like, essentially ignoring the pass rush. That's on the general manager, Bob Quinn, and the front office. That's not on Patricia. That's on the front office. The Lions hired a, a defensive guru in Patricia and, they, and then didn't do too much to back up the side of the ball he's most familiar with. Sure, the draft didn't exactly, haul, didn't exactly fall how the Lions might have wanted it to if they were going to target defensive players, but it became clear they had a plan to improve the run game through the draft. That meant only only one front seven pick, fourth rounder Deshaun Hand, along with no no established playmakers added through free agency. There's a reason Detroit's front seven is still its biggest unknown. The biggest question still to be answered in training camp, besides the aforementioned pass rush, it's how the game. It's how the run game is actually going to work. Detroit added two off two offensive linemen, a fullback, and a potential starting running back, Carryon Johnson. Two offensive linemen, including their number one, their 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 top overall pick this year, Frank Ragnow from Arkansas, a center, a big ass center who can really pull and push his weight around in the line of scrimmage. But until pads actually come on, it's tough to tell whether the league's worst rushing offense from a season ago will get markedly better in 2018. Then you see the salary, the quotables, uh, the quotable is 
quote. I've been talking about that since January. I think, like I said the other night, the last night or the night before, we don't play until September or maybe or August in the preseason, but September in the off in the regular season. So I think we had some offensive linemen. We had a running back in free agency. We had, we had a running back in the draft. So I think on paper, should our run game be better? Yeah, probably. Now it's up to the players and coaches and all of us to make sure we get it, get out to the spring portion of our practices to implement the new guys into the system. Get to training camp, and we'll have a very physical training camp. We'll see how everything comes together. So I think the pieces are there. Now it's really up to, you know, all of us in the building to kind of make sure these guys produce at a high level, unquote. That's from Lions General Manager Bob Quinn. Salary cap space is 9166585 per the NFL Players Association. We already got the... Everyone knows all the draft picks. The undrafted rookie free agents, Deontes Alexander at wide receiver from Franklin, Al Rashid Benton, a linebacker from West Virginia, Amari Coleman, from a cornerback from Central Michigan, Mike Chippewas, Antoine Davis, a cornerback from Texas, the Longhorns, Hook'em Horns, Josh Fatu, a defensive tackle from USC, the Trojans, Mike Ford, a cornerback from Southeast Missouri, Chris Jones, a cornerback from Nebraska, cornerbacks, not quarterbacks, cornerbacks, Chris Lacey, a wide receiver from Oklahoma State, probably Eddie Lacey's uh, younger brother, Chad Meredith, linebacker, Southeast Missouri, John Montellus, John Montellus, an offensive lineman from Virginia. Bu Nunn, offensive lineman from Appalachian State. Brandon Powell, wide receiver from Florida, the Gators. Tio Redding, wide receiver from Bowling Green. Ryan Santoso, a punter from Minnesota, the Golden Gophers. And... Jojo Wicker, defensive lineman from Arizona State. Those are the undrafted running undrafted rookie free agents. So they're the unrestricted free agent sign, and then TJ Jones restricted free agent sign. Players acquired via trade, none. That's it. That's all you need to know. That's all the truth I have for tonight. So that you know what that means. It's now time for the National Sports Report with Lewis Tenor. Lewis, take it away. Got it. All right, we'll start with baseball scores as we normally do. And it goes like this. The Yankees over the Mariners, 7-2. to German got the win. Gonzalez got the loss. Dodgers and Cubs played two today. Uh, the Cubs took game two, two to one over the Dodgers, two to one. Darson got the win and Stewart got the loss. Moving on down right along. In the top of the, in the top of the ninth, the Twins are leading the Red Sox six to two, two out, nobody on. Rocky is pitching in. Bogarts is a bat. It looks like they're going to be a winner here. We'll get back to that, though. Bottom of the ninth here, Rays are leading the Astros 2-1. to One, one out in a row first. Romo is pitching in. Testing is a bat. Bottom of four, Rockies are leading the Mets 9-2. It looks like their three-game winning streak is over. Uh, Bravo. Bravo is pitching in. Desmond, that back. Bottom four, D backs and Angels are tied at one. No one out, no one on. Koch is pitching in. Full host is at bat. Boy, look out. Bottom four, Padres lead the Athletics two to one. Blackburn is pitching in. Reyes is at bat. 
top four. Giants lead the Marlins four to two. No one on, no one out. Rodriguez is pitching in. Castro is bad. Dodgers took game one of the game series against the Cubs. Four to two. Andreas got the win. Wilson got the loss. And Jansen got the save. Nationals over the Orioles 9-7. Miller got the win. Scott got the loss. And Doolittle got the save. Cardinals edge the Phillies 7-6. Ix got the win. Dominique has got the loss. Brewers has the Pirates 3-2. Patella got the win. Talon got the loss, and Kimbrell got the save. Braves over the Blue Jays, eleven to four. Freeman got the win. Garcia got the loss. Indians took off on the White Sox, six to three. Clevenger got the win. Rodding got the loss, and Allen got the save. As we mentioned, the Reds over the Tigers, nine to five. Romano got the win. Boyd got the loss. And finally, the Rangers over the Royals, 4-1. Hamels got the win. Hamo got the loss, and Kila got the same. I said Hamels, then Hamo did not the same person. Dutch uh, Hamels, I think that. Yeah. Okay, so now on to the standings, and they go like this. And as usual, the Red Sox and Yankees are going to be battling it out, as usual. And the Yankees are now 48-22, have a full game lead over the Red Sox. That went 49-25. The rest uh, is a joke, as the Rays are 34-39, 15 and a half back. Blue Jays are 33-39, 16 back. And the Orioles, oh boy, I feel sorry for you. 20 and 51, 28 and a half games back. Oh, that's embarrassing. In the Central, Indians are 38 33, have a four game lead over the Tigers at 36 and 38. Twins are five and a half back at 32 and 37. White Sox are 24 and 48, 15 back. And the Royals, 17 and a half back at 22 and 59. Uh, 51. That's bad enough. In the West, Astros, who are the highest team right now in baseball, as they won 12 in a row. Now going for 13, are 49-26, have a two-game lead over the Mariners at 46-27. Angels, 38-35, 10 back. A's, even, 36-36, 11.5 back. And the Rangers, 31-44, 18 back. In the National League. Braves are 43 and 29, have a three and a half game lead. The Nationals at 39 and 32. Phillies, four and a half back at 38 and 33. <clears throat> Mets are 10 and a half back at 31 and 38, pending outcome of this game. And the Marlins are 29 and 44, 14 and a half back. Mm -hmm. Central, Brewers, 43 and 30, a half game lead for the Cubs at 41 and 29. Cardinals 38 33, 4 back. Pirates 7 back at 36 and 37. And the Reds 27 and 45 at 15 and a half back. And finally in the West, D backs are 40 and 32. Have a two game lead over the Dodgers at 38 and 34. The Giants are 5 and a half back at 35 and 30. Not bad. Rockies 6 back at 30 points, 38. And the Padres are 34 and 40 at 7 back. Mm. It's a lot worse than it looks. I'll give you that. All right, so let's check down the schedule for tomorrow's games. And they go this, and they go this way. Or your June 20th. And we've got some day games tomorrow. First up, the Tigers will take on the Reds at 1235. At 1237, the Braves will take on the Blue Jays, 105. Cardinals will take on the Phillies, 110. The White Sox will take on the Indians, 220. The Dodgers will take on the Cubs, 
340. Wow, that line was here. A's will take on the Padres at 345. The Marlins will take on the Giants. Night games at 7. So if night games go like this, the Mariners will take on the Yankees. The Orioles will take on the Nationals. The Brewers will take on the Pirates. 8-10 games. The Red Sox will take on the Twins. The Rays will take on the Astros. Good luck with that one. 8-15 will feature the Rangers versus the Royals. At 8-40, the Mets will take on the Rockies. All right. So now we'll switch on to some other news, uh, other scores of the day. Uh, MLS um, World Cup Soccer, for those of you who are following the World Cup. Uh, we, had three, we had three games on the schedule uh, this morning and this afternoon, and they go like this. Japan or Colombia, 2-1. to one. Senegal pulls up the upset against Poland, also 2-1. to one. And Russia over Egypt, 3-1. to one. Uh, But uh, Numar was out with a was out with his injury, and oh boy, that's going to hurt. I'll have more on that in a little bit. Now for tomorrow's schedule, 8 o'clock, Portugal takes on Morocco. 11 a.m., Uruguay takes on Saudi Arabia. And at 2, Iran takes on Spain. And they ran so far away. Oh, no. Ooh, okay. You get the idea, though. And um, Ronaldo in uh, Friday's game scored an amazing three goals. Too bad they don't have a tie. All right, so I got some WNBA um, action to mention, as there's a few games in the league tonight. Wait for a second. Yeah, we have, uh, I believe there was four games on the list. And we'll start with, we'll start with the bottom here. As the Washington Mystics just beat up on the Chicago Sky, 88 to 60. I'm picking that up, folks. Liberty gave the Dream a Nightmare, 79 to 72. Game of Progress, the Vegas Aces are leading the Seattle Storm, 72-68, with uh, 6.14 to go in the fourth quarter. And the Lynx, uh, shall we say, clipped the Dallas Wings, 91-83. You get the idea. Uh, no games tomorrow on the schedule, so we'll jump now on to the news items of the day. And they go like this. First up, um, in the world of NHL, Mike Hoffman was traded twice uh, to say ends up on Panthers amid cyberbullying investigation involving his fiance. Oh boy. Where do you hear this one, folks? He was traded twice, uh, say, from going from the Sanders to the Sharks to the Panthers. Nearly a week after allegations surfaced that his fiance harassed Ottawa captain Eric Carlson's wife online. The first deal sent Hoffman to the ECHL defenseman Cody uh, Donahue, Ottawa's fifth round choice in the 2020 draft, sent to San Jose for veteran or Mikhail. Um, Parker and defenseman Julius Bergman, and a six-round draft pick in 2020. About two hours, excuse me, here, about two hours later, Hoffman uh, was traded again. This time, going from the Sharks to Florida, along with the seven-round pick in this year's draft, for the Panthers' picks in the second, fourth, and fifth rounds of the draft, which begins on Friday. And sitting on down here, on May 4th, Melinda Carlson filed an order of protection against Monica Carlick, Hoffman's fiance, alleging that she harassed Carlson's online. That harassment included remarks about the death of their child who was stillborn in March via comments on, Melinda, on Melinda's Instagram under an account of a 
of an assumed name and alias. Uh, Monica uh, Clark had uttered numerous statements about wishing my unborn child dead, uttered that she wished I was dead and someone should take out my husband's late finished career, the document said according to media reports. Hoffman and Clark had denied the accusations. Those are, that's, those are strong words. Mm. Ugh. I mean, that's... I mean... I, uh, that, that's, that's very... That's, that's unlawful. That's, very unlawful, yeah. I just don't want to make it that. It's, that's, that's, very, that's very insulting. Okay, got some injury notes here to mention. Giants closer Hunter Strickland out 16 weeks after breaking his hand. Fractured his right hand while punching a door last night following a blown save. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> kind of like LeBron James, huh? Yeah. Dumb and dumber. Okay. Manager Bruce uh, Bochy told reporters that Strickland had surgery on the pinky finger of his right hand. Well, if you hadn't done that stupid thing, you wouldn't have gotten it in the first place. The closer had has got to have emotional control. Bochy said, we all get frustrated, and that's a tough loss, and a gut re- and a gut-wrenching loss. I'm sure he felt full responsibility, but he didn't think before it happened. I am thoroughly disappointed, trust me. I am crushed because this guy has grown as a pitcher and a person. I know Hunter cares deeply. Strickland posted a lengthy message on Instagram uh, earlier tonight. In which he apologized, in which he apologized to my family, my teammates, my coaches, this organization, and our fan base, and vowed to learn from this. Yeah. How you learn from it, that's another story altogether. I mean, really. They've all, they've all done things. All right. Um, more, new, more baseball uh, notes here. The St. Louis Cardinals activate closer Greg Holland, the big ticket reliever, uh, tonight, and placed right-hander Matt Bowman on the 10 DL list because of blisters on his right hand. Yow. Holland, who tied for the National League with 41 saves last season for the Colorado Rockies, signed with the Cardinals just prior to the season on a one-year deal worth $14 million. He hasn't pitched since May 25th because of a right hip injury and struggled uh, mightily before the injury with an ERA of 9.45 in 13 of the third innings pitched. He has blown his only two save opportunities this season and was removed from the closest role in early May in favor of Bud Norris. Holland hasn't fared any better than Myers either. He is 0 for 2, and his ERA is 6.43 with 7 innings pitched. Yeah. Bowman is 0 and 2 with an ERA of 5.75 and 20 and a third innings pitched this season. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'll quote this in saying it's the blind leading the blind, so to speak. I mean, your ERA is, you know, like borderline, and uh, you didn't pitch one of the players either. Okay. NFL to testify at a congressional hearing on sports betting. The House Judiciary Command is expected to hold a hearing on June 26th, that's tentative, in Washington, D.C. The Senate Judiciary Committee and the Senate Commerce Committee are also examining the issue uh, Utah Senator Orrin Hatch has announced he is working on sports uh, sports betting legislation focusing on prote- uh, protecting the integrity of sports in general. So, so ESPN that part of Hatch's plan is centered on strengthening the Sports Bribery Act, a federal law that was not implicated by the Supreme Court decision. Well, 
I'm no lawyer, but don't you think it should have been done? Really? Okay, Nationals acquired Royals right-hander Kevin uh, Arena for three prospects. The Royals acquired outfielder Blake Perkins, third baseman Kevin Gutierrez, and right-hander pitcher Yoshi Morel for Harnia. One of the most desirable pitchers in the bullpen available on the trade market. Uh, Harnia has 14 saves this season with a with a what's an ERA one point one point oh five wow this season for the Royals striking out twenty two batters in twenty five and two third innings while walking only two batters he is coming off a twenty seventeen season with a career high twenty six saves Nationals manager David Mar- Davy Martinez says he'll be he will fit right he'll fit right in as he's closed out games. He comes in the eighth inning for me. Um, we have we have an all star closer right now, so he'll be asked to do different things. So he'll fit right in. Martinez went out two closer type arms to choose from at the end of games. Sean Doolittle is having a strong season as a closer with eighteen saves and nineteen opportunities with a one point four seven ERA with forty three strikeouts. In 30 and 2 third innings. Do a little welcome the addition of uh, Arena saying it was awesome to have a world to add a World Series closer to the bullpen. I couldn't agree with you more. Wow. All right. Continuing on out here. Let's take care of that. Hmm. Milwaukee Bucks guard Sterling Brown. Filed a lawsuit against the city of Milwaukee and its police department today, blaming unlawful arrest and excessive force when officers used a stun gun during his arrest for a parking violation. His attorney, Mark Thomas, filed the lawsuit in federal court. Brown was talking to officers while waiting for the site for a citation for illegally parking. In a disabled spot outside of Walgreens on the night of January 26th, when officers took him down because he did not remove his hands from his pockets immediately as ordered. The video of the confrontation showed an officer approaching Brown as the conversation uh, around 2 a.m. as the conversation became tense. The officer calls for more squad cars and help. As many as eight officers stood around Brown, one officer asked him to take his hands out of his pocket, then the scuffle began. Now, the officer starts yelling, Taser, three times. Police Chief Alfonso Morales apologized to Brown last month when body camera of the video of the arrest was released. Brown was not charged with anything, and three officers were disciplined with suspensions ranging from 2 to 15 days. Eight other officers were to undergo remedial training in personal communications. I'm not saying he was right for parking in that spot, but you don't go out and be the living crap out of someone just for that. You really don't. <coughs> Neymar. Neymar will be out with an ankle injury for Brazil. Oh boy. It's one of your best goal players in, the, in soccer. That could be a problem. Incidentally, uh, Alex uh, Bergman came through with a two-run double in the ninth last night to give the Astros their 12th straight victory. Houston doesn't have a problem with this at all. They're going to have a problem tonight as, as the Rays beat them 2-1 to one to end that 12-game winning streak. Well, you can't win them all. Right. <laughs> yeah, 13. I guess 13 is unlucky. Okay. Uh, FIBA, that's, uh, you know, like soccer has FIBA, we have FIBA in basketball. Uh, they changed its rules for qualifying for the Women's Olympics and World Cup tournament. They have a World Cup tournament in basketball, too. The IBF announced yesterday the new system will allow more countries to qualify for both tournaments, said, US, said USA CEO Jim Tooley who is one of the FIFA executive 
on the executive board. First round qualifying begins uh, for the Olympics will be held in November 2019 and will be based geographically, based with contests in Europe, Africa, uh, the Americans, and Asia. The Oceania region, that includes Australia, will play in the Asian bracket for these tournaments. 16 teams will advance in four main tournaments in various locations around the world beginning in February. The top three finishers will qualify for the 2020 Olympics, making up the 12-team field. Japan is the host country. And, of course, you'll see on Mac Bitt. The winner of the World Basketball Championships next year will also receive the Ormac to the 2020 Olympics. All right. Uh, the big shock of the week so far, at least I think so, Washington Capitals coach Barry Trotz resigned from his team becoming and becoming our free agent just over a week after giving the Capitals their first Stanley Cup. It was reported that Trotz did not receive a contract extension after the season. There was a two-year extension on his contract if his team won the Cup. The extension uh, was negotiated a new deal in 2014 at the time, when head coaches such as Maple Leafs Mike Babcock and Blackhawks head coach Joel Quinville uh, exploded onto the coach's salary with blockbuster deals. The Capitals and Trotz attempted to reconsider an extension on better conditions for Trotz, but were unable to come to terms. Trotz and the Capitals had openly discussed getting a new contract since winning the Cup against the Kings in five games. Rumor is that the Islanders may be looking to go after him, as they are the only current team without a coach. Oh, great. Going to my worst enemy. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Minnesota Vikings to induct the late coach Dennis Green. They already thought they were. We're not thought. Into the Ring mm-hmm. of Honor. The ceremony will be held at halftime during a September 23rd game versus the Bills at U.S. Bank Stadium. Green coached the Vikings from 1992 to 2001, where he coached 171 games in 10 seasons, with a record of 101 and 70, as including playoffs. Uh, he finished second in career victories in franchise history, only behind Bud Grant with 178. Green passed away in July 2016. He led the Vikings to four NFC Central titles and two appearances in the NFC Championship game. Green was named Coach of the Year in 1992 by the Washington Touchdown Club Club, and by Sports Illustrated in 1998. And was this and is this year's only person to be inducted in their Ring of Honor this year. All right. Uh, Spurs forward Rudy Gay says he will decline 2018-2019 option to become an unrestricted free agent this summer. According to ESPN, Gay is turning down $8.8 million, which I think you're crazy to do, in order to hit the free agency market. He a two-year $17 million deal last offseason, and the deal contained a player option in his second year. This season, he's averaged 11.5 points per game, 5.1 rebounds, and only 21.5 minutes per game, which is a career low, in 57 games for the Spurs this season. Mm, I get it. All right. Uh, US, former U.S. soccer forward Landon Donovan attempted to clarify his involvement in a marketing campaign that is designated to encourage Americans to support for Mexico at the World Cup by referencing his upbringing. Donovan was raised in Southern California and speaks fluent Spanish and has appeared in several TV commercials as well as commercial images as part of a campaign by Wells Fargo where he says, Vamos Mexico uh, and holds up a scarf that reads, My other team is Mexico. Several former U.S. players such as Kobe Jones as well as ESPN analysts have slammed the support for Mexico and urged fans not to support the U.S. top rivals. But Donovan, who is the 
team's all-time winning score um, replied to the disapproval on Twitter, explaining his stance. He states, My heart is with America first, and no one should question uh, my loyalty to support the U.S. national team. He also stated that since the U.S. is not involved in this year's World Cup, I am supporting, I am supportive of our rivals, and I would like to see them do well. And if they don't agree, well, that's their opinion. He's also played with, um, uh, in Mexican leagues, like, um, a lot of Mexican, uh, with Mexican players on Mexican league teams as well. He's, so, that, I guess, would be, uh, for support. I get it. I might be crazy about this decision either, but I get it. Okay. A uh, big tragedy of, the tragedy of the weekend here. Investigators suspect arson uh, killed the brother of Sacramento Kings for Zach Randolph over the weekend at Indiana Bar. The fire occurred at what's called Hop's Blues Room in Marlow, Indiana. That's about on Saturday. Less than 24 hours after his brother Roger was found dead. Firefighters extinguished the blaze that told about $20,000 in damages. Marlin Fire and Police Front Investigator Brandon Eckerstein said that the fire was arson. Uh, I have a little bit more of that story uh, coming up. It certainly was a happy Father's Day for Texas Rangers rookie catcher Jose Trevino as he blew the two-run single into left center field that kept a four-run rally in the bottom of the ninth on Sunday. And became a you know, became major league player just uh, now, just a little bit less than a week ago. He said in a TV interview, this has been a crazy week, and I can't wait to tell my son about it. Trevino was also thinking about his own dad, Joe uh, Bug Raymond Bug, or Bug Raymond, who passed away in 2013 at the age of 60. Very sorry to hear that. Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger said he's not concerned about a record-breaking contract. He says he cares more about a record-breaking Super Bowl win, saying that it's more important to him. As he told ESPN from his pro football camp on Sunday in Pittsburgh, he is now about to begin his 15th year in the NFL. Roethlisberger and the Steelers are poised for one last extension with the franchise that gives him they gave him two Super Bowl titles. But he is content with discussing those matters after this season is finished. Let's hope it's a good let's hope it's a good run to the postseason though. Um, Brent Garner has been out now for three games. Um, with a bright knee soreness, an MRI confirmed on Sunday that he had some inflammation in his knee, but uh, nothing serious. He was to return on uh, yesterday, but so far he's now about three straight days. Let's hope it's not more serious than we think it is. Okay, Brewers reliever Adrian Hauser vomited twice in Sunday's game against the Phillies, but still managed to finish the eighth inning. Manager Craig Council came out to the mound to give Hauser some water while the grounds crew came to clean up the spot. Yeah. Hauser went back out for warm-ups and remained in the game. He allowed a double to Phillies catcher Jorge Afano to open up the inning. Then got pit, then got pitch hitter uh, Valentin before vomiting a second time. Council came up, came back out to check on Hauser again but remained in the game. He allowed a run scoring double by shortstop Scott Kingery. However, he got the second baseman Caesar uh, Hernandez to fly out and Ryan Hoskins to ground out. Oof. You ask me, though, I think you should have stayed out, though. Vomiting twice. Ugh. Patriots quarterback Tom Brady feels that retirement is drawing closer, but still feels he can play for about another, oh, three years. 
until about the age of 45, he said during an interview with uh, Oprah on Sunday night. He turns 41 next month. You know, give me three more years of that guy. You know, uh, U.S. Open declared uh, Brooks Copa as the U.S. Open repeating champ, which is not easy to do in this day and age. Tiger Woods just bombed out completely. In fact, Eric Nicholson wasn't doing any better either. Oh, boy. All right, just to see if I missed anything else. Whoops. This is the post-game edition. Speaking of uh, U.S. Open, Shanghai Golf Course um, was under controversy as the top players struggled, struggled on the course. Uh, Rafael Cabrera said it was not a fair test for the game. The greens were not very playable with unnecessary pin positions. The USGA found a way to make us look like moron on the course. What a shame how they managed to uh, run a perfectly great course. USGA officials agreed with the executive director, Mike Davis. Later admitting that the setup was just too much and promised to slow down the course overnight. Still, I mean, yeah, that, that, is not, that is not a great course to play, especially when they played back once before. Back in, um, I believe it was 2015. All right, you know what? Um, I'm going to end it there, so I'm going to turn it back over to you. All right. So that's going to do it for uh, the post-game edition for Tuesday, June 19th, 2018. Before we sign off, I want to remind everyone to share this episode on our entire podcast on social media and have their friends share that as well We put because we want to tell them that the Michigan Sports Truth podcast is in search of a wider audience that is fans of sports, especially our teams, including the Tigers and Lions in the state of Michigan. So please spread the word about the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast on Spreaker's Cloud, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts via iTunes. It's Facebook page and it's Twitter handle at Michigan underscore truth. For Lewis Tenor, I'm Taylor Phillips. We'll talk to you sometime at around 7 or 8 o'clock. Uh, how about uh, 8 o'clock? Um, I gotta get back to them because, like I said, my nephew is graduating high school tomorrow. Um, so I'll, do, I'll get back to him on that, okay? Okay. Well, right. for Lewis Tenor, I'm Taylor Phillips. Follow me on Twitter at DT2Phillips. TTFN, ta ta for now. The Michigan Sports Truth Podcast does not represent or defame any of the teams it covers. It only detects, exposes, and reveals honest, actual, and hidden truth, facts, and statistics about them. Thank you.